LeBron James has completed his 20th season of playing some of the highest level of basketball anyone in human history has ever witnessed. Definitively living up to every torturous bit of hype and criticism since day one, the kid from Akron's become a four-time NBA champion, a four-time finals MVP, a four-time regular season MVP, a 19-time All-Star, a 13-time All-NBA first team player, making 19 total All-NBA teams, five All-Defensive first teams, six all-defensive teams in total, a Rookie of the Year trophy, an NBA scoring championship, an NBA assist championship, and is not to mention the NBA's all-time leading scorer who's broken record on record across all statistical categories in three separate decades. In layman's terms, he's a physical specimen that will be scientifically examined for generations to come. His ability to withstand the test of time shows up in the fact that Game 4 of the West Finals in year 20 at age 38 saw Braun set a playoff career high for points scored in a half. For context, LeBron had played 281 playoff games leading up to that Game 4 matchup versus Denver, honoring a fellow scoring champion in Melo who retired the same day, officially making James the only active player remaining from the 03 draft class. The King dropped 31 in the first 24 minutes of a winner go home conference finals game and finished with a clean 40 piece. More insanely, in his 17th career postseason, he averaged nearly a 25 point triple double all while playing through a torn tendon in his foot that he suffered late in the regular season in Dallas. If Father Time was undefeated, it most definitely added a 1 next to its record with the miraculous defiance of it from this man. Adding to those aforementioned accomplishments, LeBron's a member of the NBA 75th Anniversary Team, a 4-time AP Athlete of the Year, a 3-time Sports Illustrated Person of the Year, a 2-time National High School Player of the Year, a three-time Ohio Mr. Basketball, a member of the All-Rookie First Team, the Time Athlete of the Year, and the USA Basketball Player of the Year. The King's impact has been felt well beyond the four lines, despite being iconic within them. LeBron's taken a route consisting of clarity, confidence, and construction to craft a legacy that will without a doubt live on for millenniums into the future. The success he's had has come in three separate decades, points in time where the culture around him has gone from one side of the political spectrum to the other one time after the next. The social media era speeds up the progression of time in more ways than we can comprehend, but throughout it all, LeBron's found a way to influence society. In terms of basketball-wise, he's the most hyped-up prospect the sport has ever seen, and it's disrespectful to say otherwise. That's why it took me by surprise when Woj said Victor Wembenyama is, quote, maybe the greatest prospect in the history of team sports. This is the most highly anticipated player to ever enter the NBA, end quote. To be fair, when LeBron was a prospect, the Twitter sphere wasn't around, which James is quick to realize wasn't a part of his journey, saying regarding Wembenyama, quote, I did not have social media, that's all I can say. I can't imagine how different my life would be with social media. I'm happy I didn't have social media, I'm happy I was from a small town of Akron, Ohio, just kept me in the bunker and kept me locked in with the task at hand." End quote. With that said, the hype for LeBron probably even outweighed the current hype for Wemby despite social media not being around. In the early 2000s, whether it was the general hype weighing down from talking heads and fans expecting him to be the next Michael Jordan, or Nike signing him to an $87 million deal months before he played his first game as a pro. The media made LeBron out to be the second coming of Jesus Christ. Sports Illustrated labeled him the chosen one on their most famous edition when he was only a junior at St. Vincent St. Mary's, and he also graced the cover of ESPN Magazine before he entered the 12th grade. For his first NBA game in 03, the Kings media in Sacramento had 340 credentials for the contest, welcoming journalists from England, China, Japan, Germany, and Taiwan. A horde of media harassed the mere 18-year-old, drawn to him with magnetic force, surrounding him at the morning shoot-around, at his entrance into the arena, and during his pre-game warm-ups. From his first pro game at Arco Arena in Sacramento, where he tallied 25 points, 6 boards, 9 dimes, and 4 steals to this day, just about exactly 20 years later in 2023, the Chosen One would do the unthinkable by not merely living up to the hype, but becoming even better than anyone could have even predicted. 
an 18-year-old James would let us all in on how he dealt with such abominable media expectations in a clip that speaks volumes. How much pressure do you feel? There's no pressure. There's no pressure at all. I've been getting pressure since I was 10 years old. I don't think there's no pressure for me because I'm doing something that I love to do. That's play the game of basketball. <clears throat> I'm doing the same thing that y'all love to do, and that's y'all like to watch me play basketball. <laughs> if I ask y'all that question, y'all gonna say the same thing. I mean, is there any pressure to ask me these questions? It's no pressure because y'all y'all know how to do what y'all do, right? That narrative may be talked about in terms of how LeBron lived up to the pressure he faced at the very start of his career, but more ruthless hype and criticism would follow him into the second wave of his journey when he went on ESPN to announce his decision to leave Cleveland and take his talents to South Beach. The answer to the question everybody wants to know. LeBron, what's your decision? Um, in this fall, man, this is very tough. Um, in this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. Fans in Cleveland were burning his jersey all summer in 2010 when that decision was made. Fans in Miami were throwing parades waiting for his arrival. Despite leading the city of Cleveland and the Cavalier franchise back to relevancy with a conference championship in 07 and eight playoff series wins over a seven year span, media members and fans across the globe were saying he was an unloyal, ring chasing disgrace. We've supported him for seven years now, and for him to go on there and drag us through the mud for seven years and stab us in the heart, he deserves everything he gets. That what it would just happen was disgusting. The guy gave up in game three, and this is what he has to reward us with. He's one yeah, of our own. That's what he's one of our own. That's what makes it so painful. This is the worst thing that could have ever happened to me. And I just want to say that I hope that LeBron doesn't win a championship in Miami. I hope the franchise moves. That's the one thing I, miss I hope there's no more basketball in Cleveland. And I thought for once in my life, with how much I love Cleveland sports, it would love me back. And that has not happened today. Chicago, Miami, New York, they don't depend on LeBron like Cleveland, you know. Nothing else brings 30, 40,000 people down to East 4th. You know, when he's gone, half that place, half that, those places are going to close. The pressure only intensified after losing to the Mavericks in 2011's finals after his first season with his new Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh fueled team in Miami. Stephen A and Skip Bayless would have daily debates on first take, seething that he had to get it done. Um, my whole point with LeBron James is that he just needs to be quiet. So you can get back on the court and make up to millions upon millions of fans who watched you wet the bed in the fourth quarter. That's what you need to be doing. LeBron James, it is time. And the reason that I say it's time is because he's the one with the tattoo, the chosen one. He's the one with the King James, but his game has come up short time and time again. There's something about LeBron James that's really starting to alarm me. You got titles, King James, chosen one, none of the great guy. You know, they shun all of that until they won a championship. It's like he wants to be crowned with no ranks. You don't get to do that. Skip's been saying you that gotta for get years. it done. To lose in the finals the way that he did, and then to come out here with the smile on your face like that—the world is just beautiful. I would—I don't understand it. I, champions don't do that. Big fat smile on his face like it's no big deal that we lost, and I embarrassed myself in the NBA finals. It's no big deal. It—I it, I can't take it no more. It, it, enough. I, I'm shocked. Enough. Yep, I'm shocked. Enough. Right Stephen A. You gotta Bayless. get it done. It, Stephen A. Bayless. Oh, don't say that. Oh, like it is time. I'm tired of this man being celebrated. For what? We know you're great. How about winning? Win for once. Just win. win. Yeah. Just win, baby. A year later, in 2012's Eastern Conference Finals against Boston, after going down 3-2 to two and being forced to save Miami's season on the road in a hostile Boston environment against the Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Ray Allen stacked Celtics, LeBron would score 45 points on 19 for 26 made shots, 2 of 4 made triples, to go along with a monstrous 15 boards and 5 dimes. With a media frenzy getting ready to change his nickname from the chosen one to the frozen one in the blink of an eye, the clutch showing from James would ultimately go down as an all-time iconic playoff performance and ultimately save his legacy. The Heat would win Game 6 on the road in Boston and Game 7 back in Miami, before taking care of Oklahoma City in a gentleman's sweep to secure LeBron his first ring and finals MVP. A year later, in Game 6 of the 2013 Finals versus San Antonio, Chris Bosh's rebound and Ray Allen's dagger from the corner forced overtime, but lost in the shadows of that dramatic Game 6 ending was Game 7 of that series, 
which featured a performance just as clutch as the iconic Boston game a year prior. In a multi-sided winner-go-home affair during the NBA Finals, the biggest stage across all of sports, Miami found themselves up 90-88. to With just over 30 seconds remaining, LeBron drained one of the clutchest, yet most forgotten daggers of his career. James pulls up, puts it in, four-point lead! This ultimately secured LeBron and the Heat back-to-back -back NBA titles, as James had responded to the doubters yet again. Between his infamous return to Cleveland a year later in 2014, I love you, I'm back! And of course his time in Miami before that, the 2010s decade saw James rack up three championships, but more notably qualify for the NBA Finals in a staggering eight straight years. James would claim legitimate ownership over the Eastern Conference across 15 years of NBA service. Poggi will defend. Oh! oh! LeBron James with no regard for human life! Before parting ways to Los Angeles in 2018, where he'd ultimately lead the Lakers to a title in 2020, and most recently, help Anthony Davis feel the purple and gold to an additional two playoff series wins, coming up four wins short of making his 11th career appearance in an NBA Finals in 2023. As LeBron now contemplates retirement, all that's left to be said is what a damn legendary last few decades it's been for the man. While we'd all like to see him go on for another decade given the high level he's still performing at, and given the fact that he just stated himself that he's better than potentially 95% of the league, if that's really all we've witnessed of the king, a slow clap is certainly in order. If you enjoyed that video, please help this channel reach 100k by subscribing. Thanks for any bit of support, and peace.